Good morning. This meeting of the Baltimore City Council Health, Environment, and Technology Committee is now called to order. I am Councilwoman Danielle McRae, representing the second district and also chair of the committee. In attendance, we have committee members, Councilwoman Felicia Porter, representing the 10th district, and also Councilman Mark Conway, representing the 4th district. Um, before we get started, just as a reminder, um, please take a moment to turn off or silence your cell phones um, if you have them on. Today, the committee is going to be holding a hearing on resolution 24 021 9R, informational hearing citywide rat abatement efforts for the purpose of inviting representatives from the Baltimore City Health Department, DPW, and DHCD to discuss citywide rat abatement efforts, including reducing the rodent population, collaboration of city agencies on coordinated abatement measures, and the status of the Health Department's Bureau of Vector Control. At this time, we are going to hear from the sponsor of the bill. Thank you, Madam Chair. Just wanna thank everyone for joining us today. Um, this per this per the purpose of this committee is for us to address a critical issue that um, has been far overlooked for too long, uh, the rise of the rodent population here in the city of Baltimore. Um, and just to provide some context, in 2023, Baltimore was ranked one of the 10 top cities, top 10 cities, excuse me, for rat infestations nationwide. Um, we know that rodents are not just an inconvenience, they are a serious public health threat that many of the large municipalities across the nation are um, getting a handle on. Um, the health risks not only include disease transmission, food contamination, but also um, contr contribution to unsafe living conditions, in, especially in vulnerable neighborhoods. Um, I want to emphasize that having a clean and healthy neighborhood is a fundamental right that our constituents deserve. And so this is an opportunity to provide interest and also collaboration between the agencies, fellow council members, and the community um, to ensure that we get a handle on this issue. Um, and and not only prioritizing um, the immediate issue, but really looking at long-term innovative solutions um, so that we can really get this under control. Um, thank you so much, Madam Chair. Thank you. We're gonna hear from our agencies. Um, first, the city solicitor's office. Hi, Desiree Lucky with the city solicitor's office. The law part department approves this bill for legal form and sufficiency. Thank you, and the health department. Good morning, Madam Chair and members of the committee. Julia Roche, Legislative Affairs Director from the Baltimore City Health Department. Um, as it sounds like you all are aware, rat abatement um, previously was housed within the health department. However, um, about 20, 21 years ago, it moved um, into DPW. So we, we really defer to DPW to speak to their um, efforts around rats. Thank you. Thank you. I'm DHCD. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. Jason Wright, representing the Department of Housing and Community Development. Uh, we respectfully stand behind our favorable bill report, and I know DPW has a presentation coming in. We have also contributed a few slides to that presentation, so I'll be able to go into a little bit of information to share. Okay, and for DPW, how long is the presentation? Good morning, Madam Chair and members of the committee. I'm Alejandra Ivanovic representing DPW. The um, presentation is 16 slides. Okay. Can Are we able to get through this in 15 minutes? I believe so. Okay. Mm -hmm. And you did submit a... You guys did submit a report. Um, do you stand yes. by your report? Um, yes, okay. uh, no objection. Okay, we can start your presentation whenever you're ready. Okay, thank you. So good morning, Chair McRae and members of the committee. My name is Robert Stratford, a legislative liaison in the office of DPW's Office of Legislative Affairs. Next slide. Can you speak clearly into the mic, please? If yes. your mic is not on, can you turn it on? All right, is this better? Okay, so we would like to start the presentation with some foundational information. The Norway rat, also known as the brown rat, is the most common rat species in Baltimore. Norway rats have a flexible diet, which does include animal waste. They tend to prefer cities with bodies of water nearby, as that is a key survival resource. They can find shelter in bulkways, tall grass, and even abandoned buildings. Um, finally, they have a fast breeding period, which consists of approximately 21 to 23 days. 
So next slide, please. DPW has a multifaceted approach to rat abatement. Our primary arm is our rat rubout program. The key methods for that program include inspecting, proactively, baiting, as well as educating. Now, there will be more in-depth information about the program in the following slide, but prior to that, I just wanted to speak to the three supportive components that we have. Um, and the first of those being municipal trash cans, which again, eliminate food source. You know, by having it secured in bends, that food source is not present to the rodent populations. And being that it consists of durable composite resin, they're not able to chew through that either. Um, our street and alley cleaning combats both food source and shelter as well. The idea being with less blight, there is less food source and it's just less attractive for rodent populations. And lastly, lot maintenance assists with shelter, being that it reduce, reduces the amount of green shelter. As previously stated, rats um, can take shelter in tall grass or meadows. So um, the lot maintenance that we provide to city owned properties is a is helpful for that for that effort. Next slide. So in this slide, we will dive into the specifics of our RAT program. Here we have the composition, the coverage, and the responsibilities. At the moment, the team is comprised of 10 pest control workers. The team lead is also involved in our pest control activities. The team reports to Chief Guy Bell Sr., who is here with us today. And the, um, Sorry about that. And they are under the Bureau of Solid Waste. So the coverage, the team rotates through one city, one council district per day, visiting at least one community per district monthly. Larger districts receive at least two visits monthly. So the team works together in one district to maximize efficiency. Below coverage are some of the responsibilities. Those in the field responsibilities include proactive inspections and 311 requests. As you can see, our pest control team can be very busy as we can handle 82 inspections daily. Next slide. So speaking to those responsibilities a little more in depth, um, I'll start with the proactive inspections, which are pretty straightforward. The pest control team proactively identifies any rat burrows that need any treatment. Um, they also check for burrows or previously active burrows to make sure there is no recent activity. Now, the 311 portion starts with a service request via our 311 um, portal. And after the request is submitted, the member goes out and inspects the location. If a borough is found, the team member applies the bait directly into the borough and places a yellow flag in the areas treated. They also check to see other boroughs to make sure that there are no signs of recent activity. And that's where the proactive piece kind of combines with the reactive piece because as our pest control teams are on site, um, they are also proactively scanning and responding to any of the requests. Um, and at the end of it, if a borough is found, they will place, they will leave a hang card for the resident notifying them of such. Next slide. So starting this, this will start the data portion of our presentation um, we're starting with the inspection totals. These totals include both proactive inspections and 311 requests. Um, based off the data, we are on track to increase um, this year's inspections from last year's totals. In the middle of our slide is the first half year comparisons. Um, and we're already seeing an increase of 25%. With year 24 having totals of 776,436, and year 23 having a total of 60,718. Um, that increase of 25.9%. Can you speak into the mic, please? Yes, sorry about that. So Thank you. below that are some insights. Um, we typically perform more requests and inspections during the summer months. Um, and we notice the opposite in colder months. That presumably follows the logic that there is more food source and resources available in the summer, just with more people about. Um, so we have noticed that in our data. Next slide. So on this slide, we have our district breakdown. The green bars in the graph are the number of proactive inspections, and the blue portions are the number of 311 rat rubout requests. 
So as you can see, District 13, 1, and 10 are the areas where we receive more 311 requests, and the data reflects that. Um, across all districts in 2023, we completed 138,000 proactive inspections and reactive requests. Um, and based off half-year data, we are already at 76,000 um, proactive requests and 311 requests for the year of 2024. Next slide. So closing out the data portion, this will show the number of proactive inspections conducted compared to the actual number of 311 service requests that we get. So the green bar being year 23's proactive inspections versus the number of 311 requests. So as you can see, um, in year 2023, we had 96 of our rat abatement data, 96% being comprised of proactive inspections and 4% being reactive service requests. So this year is a similar story with 96.5% of proactive inspections taking place and 3.5% consisting of reactive service requests. Next slide. There is ample information and resources on our website um, with more information about the rat rub out program and informational flyers as well. Um, we also have the Clean City Guide, which serves as a resource for clean city habits. Uh, the guide has sections on proper waste management and outlines responsibilities of residents and business owners. Now we have this information hyperlinked and it's attached to the presentation, but we can get the committee the links directly if need be. Next slide. So here we wanted to discuss resident tips highlighting the important role of municipal trash cans as the first line of defense. Um, as mentioned, they are critical in keeping that food source away from the rodents. And if a resident is in need of a replacement, whether it be lost, stolen, or damaged, they can request one via 311. We also like to emphasize you know, yard maintenance tips, touching on points earlier about how flexible their diet is. It's crucial to make sure animal waste is properly disposed of as it can make rats immune to the poison, as well as just routine upkeep on lawn maintenance, again, discouraging that green habitat that rodents can find in tall grass. And lastly, home protection goes a long way. So just making sure that holes and cracks are addressed is another tip that we like to remind our residents of. Next slide. So we'd like to end with some additional initiatives um, starting with the Be More Beautiful org, which is a community-like organization that engages residents and businesses to adopt cleaner city habits. Uh, we also offer community pitch-ins, where communities can request a roll-off for cleanup. And again, this is useful for reducing harborage and bulk waste and any other potential um, large items that rats can seek shelter in. And lastly, community cleanups with the mayor. Um, and this is just a, a great seasonal reminder for residents to take an active part in cleaning up their communities and, and generally discouraging uh, ratty habits. So with that, I will pass the stage to HCD, um, who will touch on their education and outreach, as well as their rodent call process. Thank you, Madam Chair and members of the committee. This is Jason Wright representing the Department of Housing and Community Development. I know that we are being conscious of time, so I will uh, I'll keep that in mind. <clears throat> so for our education and outreach, we have ample materials on our website. Uh, it details housing, uh, the, the zoning, and our building-related code as related to this particular issue. It provides information to owners and tenants on their responsibilities and has a uh, an FAQ for those most common topics that arise. We also have informational material such as a sanita <coughs> sanitation guide for posting in units, a sanitation brochure, an illegal dumping brochure, and a code enforcement brochure. Next slide, please. Speaking to how uh, rodent calls are rounded to D DHCD, um, this happens mostly when residents are reporting issues in neighboring yards or a tenant is reporting an infestation. 
DHCD's code enforcement inspectors currently address exterior and interior rodent and pest control issues in line with property maintenance requirements covered in our building fire and related codes. Specifically, uh, Section 305.4 and Section 307.7 require all external property areas to be kept free from infestation by insects, rodents, and any other any other pests. Also, the kind of the environments that would be conducive to their flourishing. Um, when pests are found, they must be promptly exterminated by an approved process that will not be injurious to human health. The interior of every building must also be kept free of infestation by insects, rodents, and other pests. We also feel that interagency collaboration is critical for this particular issue. Um, we go about that by sharing educational and outreach uh, materials. We have regular conversations about external sanitary maintenance, proper trash disposal and eliminating bulk waste. Um, once again, that can be a shelter, that can be a source of food. We have collaborative enforcement ish, uh, efforts with DPW's pest control team so that we can identify ongoing sanitation problems. Uh, the pest control team may alert DHCD inspectors when persistent issues are observed and DHCD performs an inspection uh, that may issue a citation for violations. And that concludes our presentation. Thank you. We're gonna go straight into questions um, and I'm gonna start. When we speak about um, interagency collaboration, um, well, let me start here. Is there some type of, um, what do you call the things, the little data, when you guys come together and do the data, whatever it's called, um, is it like a clean stat? How often is clean stat meeting? I'll double check, I think it's once per month, but uh, DPW may know more directly. Uh, the clean stat meeting is once a month. Okay, within clean stat, are you guys overlaying, specifically when it comes to rats, are you overlaying dirty alley requests? Are you overlaying, say, where there is tall grass, things like that at the start of the mowing season? Um, to kind of drill in on this. And the reason why I'm bringing that up is because within Holland Town, we have an area that I've been dealing with since I've been a council member since 2019, where we're continuously putting in 311s for dirty alleys with, within specific areas consistently. I also know they have a rat problem. Mm -hmm. So how are you guys using that data between agencies and also from the code enforcement um, side yes. to mitigate some of these red issues. Mm -hmm. So in clean stat, we, um, the data that we look at, we look at dirty alleys, dirty streets, um, also HCD and the number of um, citations they're issuing for sanitation concerns. So all of these things um, help eliminate the rat population. So we do talk about those things in clean stat. For the mayor's office, could you guys put together an overlay for my um, an overlay for my office about where the top? I just want to know the top ten areas where the dirty alleys are requested, and I want to know what it looks like for um, where those rat items are as well. Um, would two weeks be an appropriate time for them to put something together to give me that information? I believe so, Madam Chair, but I'll confirm and get back to you in case we might need a few more days, but I think- Okay, be and if you need more details, just skip, just let me know. Um, I, I wanna see something for me, the last 60 days. Last 60 days? The last 60 days. Thank you. And it's not just for my district. I, won't, I wanna see it for the city. I need to see if some things are adding up. Um, my second question is gonna be regarding engagement. Um, it's a very low level item for me. Um, I'm going back to Holland Town and to some other areas um, as well. We know that this is a, a large portion of this is created because there's waste. 
and folks are not um, cleaning up. I have some, I have residents who may be new to the area who may not have the, um, the background to know this is what we're supposed to do with recyclable materials. This is what we're supposed to do for trash materials. They're supposed to go into a can. How is DPW um, specifically, and also working with other agencies, and I'm going all over the place, but I'm gonna to try to center this. For example, I have a park that's new. And one thing that I asked of Rex and Parks is how are you communicating with other agencies to make sure that we're getting information out to the community, not just from my office, but proactively about cleaning up this new park that we put here, that we invested $500,000 in. How are we proactively coordinating and getting messages out to the community knowing that some of our new, new residents, English may not be their first language um, as well. So what are we proactively doing as agencies? So our communication section, uh, we have community liaisons that go out, they meet with the community, uh, they send out um, brochures and things like that in the mail. We add um, information into the water bills. So. Uh, those are some of the things we do. I don't have a communications person here with me today, but um, we do actively, actively engage with the community all the time. Our community liaisons are out. Our, um, and I know um, how HCD has inspectors that are out also giving out information. Um, so we, that's how we get the information out. Also, we have our, web, um, our website that has a lot of information. Uh, we're on social media, Facebook, Twitter, um, uh, Instagram, and then, like I said, our um, going to community meetings also. What is the what is the budget specifically for engagement? Is there anything that's coming as far as a campaign? Because I'm on, when I'm on these streaming apps or I'm on John TV watching hearings from other committees, I'm seeing Baltimore County with a whole campaign and they're telling people throw stuff in the trash. So I guess my, I guess that question should be, what are we doing around public awareness? Is there a budget? Is there something that's coming for public awareness about, hey, don't throw this in the trash and DPW, I know you guys are doing some good work in the schools. And, and for me, it starts with our kids. I share a story, I'm not gonna share it now, about how I started recycling. So everybody in my house started recycling, and then everybody on my block recycles. But it started when I was a child with former Mayor Dixon, putting some things in place regarding recycling. So, but where are we at on a public awareness campaign. Um, Madam Chair, I actually participated myself in a career day and brought uh, a lot of information to children about recycling, proper trash management, and it was like a, a really good experience. And I promoted as much information as I could with uh, elementary and middle school students. We have a community outreach team. Um, that dedicates uh, part of their time to do outreach. If you look at the slide, we have a, um, the, the, on the website, we have the details of our rad, uh, robot program, as well as a resource, um, a comprehensive resource guide that sort of explains, you know, what is the proper uh, way to dispose of trash and the methods of recycling, etc. As far as the budget, um, I'm not sure what that amount is, but if you give me some time, I'll be more than happy to um, send that information your way. Can you get, can you compile the information regard, regarding what the budget is? specifically regarding community engagement. I'm saying it because what we're doing right now, it's, it's not enough. It's not enough. Um, I, what, what I would like to see is some, I wanna see some time board 
for some radio ads. I want to see something. I want to know how are the jurisdictions around us putting these things up on and utilizing it. Then it doesn't. I'm seeing, on, I'm seeing it on YouTube. I'm seeing it on Hulu. I'm seeing it on these other places. And it's reaching me. I want it to happen in Baltimore City. I'm going to stop there. Um, thank you so much to Councilwoman Porter for bringing this bill. I know that she has a ton of questions, and I'm not going to no, eat no, up all you. your time. So <laughs> you have the floor. No, I, I, you, were, you were there. Um, I want to kind of transition into um, rat birth control. So contrapest is one of the uh, main ingredients for rat birth control that has seen a 90% effectiveness um, in other cities like San Francisco and New York. Um, has the city of Baltimore um, explored that option to reduce our rodent population in the city? Um, yes, we've explored that option. Uh, they came in and presented to us. Uh, the, the issue that we have is our permit allows us to have a certain types of um, of poisons and bait, uh, so we have to look into how we can use that. But we have we have spoken Good. to them. Um, they they did a presentation yeah. for us. We've seen what they've done in other um, jurisdictions. So yes, we have looked and, into and that. And where are we in that process of kind of kind of coming to resolution to that? Um, the reason why I'm, I'm asking that, I believe that a few years ago, a few budget seasons ago, I asked about rat rub out, um, particularly with rat birth control. And so that was about two years ago. Where are we in that process for coming to some sort of conclusion that we as the council can kind of spearhead for the next budget season for FY 2026? Um, I haven't been involved in it, but I can get you that, that answer. Okay, thank you. Thank you so much. Um, if we can get that within a week, um, I think that would be appropriate. And then my next question has to deal with um, assessments. Um, similar to Chair McCray's point um, about success metrics, how are you all judging success of the rat rub out program? So I hear um, about 76,000 uh, you know, touches have been made. However, there's still a large rat population, one of three within my, my district. Um, how, how are you all garnering success, tracking success um, because the, the rat population is still proliferating at a very high rate. Yeah, so um, the the rats are going to continue, we're going to continue to have rats mm -hmm. as long as the sanitation issue is not um, handled mm -hmm. under control. I mean, we, we have residents and even citizens, residents, uh, people that come into Baltimore, they have to dispose of their trash properly. Um, if the rats have a, a food source, a water source, shelter, they're gonna they're gonna be around. No amount of bait uh, we use will mitigate that. If you look at the data um, on the dif the different districts, um, the areas where we have a lot of uh, dirty alleys, dirty streets, um, crime and grime, all of those things uh, contribute to the rat population, and we have to, along with the residents. Um, make those changes, and if we can't do that, no matter what we do, even if we were able to get the rat birth control, mm -hmm. I mean, it's just gonna continue. So um, yes, I mean, we we clean, and sometimes we clean, and we come around a corner, and it's and it back again. again. Mm -hmm. So we just ask residents, please put it in the trash uh, trash can. You know, don't put bags out. Uh, eliminate that food source, and we'll start seeing a reduction. How do we look at success? Uh, we do more inspections, and as we're doing those inspections, the number of rat burrows that we find, find if the least of, if we if we find um, if the number of rat burrows we find decreases, then we we believe we are being successful in that particular area. Um, if we initially went there and we we inspected the entire area, we found 200 rat burrows. We go back in two weeks. You know, and that number starts decreasing, and we know that we're making a difference. But it has to be a combination of removing the um, the the, the uh, food source, the water source, and the shelter, along with our proactive inspections and and uh, baiting the rat burrows that we find. And I'm so glad you said. I'm so glad you talked about like inspections because one of the the main issues that we are seeing is that when inspectors come out, they say they can't find. The, the cause of issue with DHCD. So there's a, a disconnect between 
DPW and DHCD with, with regard to the inspection. So going back to Chair McCray's point, how are you all coordinating um, interagency collaboration for this program? And I say that because literally within the 311 system, you see conflicting, uh, uh, conflicting outcomes from both agencies. And when my team goes out, we see the red burrows right then and there. So it's like, how, how are you all reconciling that? Uh, so we work really well with um, DHC. I, I'm not sure. Um, I mean, I have to look into what you're what you're talking about. Uh, maybe you know if they have new inspectors that haven't been um, you know trained on what to look for, mm -hmm. and, and we can work with them okay. to make sure that happens. That could be the, the case, but I haven't heard that information, so I will have to check with DHCD. We work with them every day. We talk mm -hmm. to them every day. Mm -hmm. um, so if that is happening, you know, we can get to the bottom of it and make sure that we, um, the inspectors know what they're looking at. Of course, mm -hmm. our pest control workers, they're the experts, so yes. they're gonna know uh, when it's a rat burrow or when it's just a crack in the, um, in the cement or in the foundation. Uh, so yes, I can definitely work with HCD to make sure we're all on the same page in that area. Okay, I def I'd love to schedule a follow-up meeting with yeah, you all. Because sure. um, Yvonne, even though you are exceptionally great, <laughs> there's major issues with that coordination between the two agencies mm -hmm. um, that we are seeing within the district. And I wonder if it's happening citywide. So we really need to do a deep dive, not only within the education, but also the technical assistance, the um, coordination of notes and reporting within Salesforce and the 311 system for all offices and also for residents as well. And I'll save my questions for the next round. Thank you. We've been joined by Councilman James Torrance from the 7th District. Thank you, Madam Chair. You're, you're welcome. Did you have any questions recognizing that your district is, is 4 out of 14 with these requests? Okay, you have the floor. Similar to Councilwoman Porter, I wanted to do a follow-up because of the large vacant crisis that I have in my district. Um, often when we have rub out, we don't actually go on vacant properties and then they create new boroughs and colonies in the vacant properties and then it then negates everything that DCHD, the, sorry, that DPW does. So I wanna have an honest conversation about tracking data for vacant um, building notices, because I think if we have a vacant building notice on there, we should be able to bait on the property and charge them for it, because the properties actually begin, I'm just gonna say this, people dump in those properties, so it gives them the food and water source that they need to sustain a colony. But I think that coordination with the agencies in terms of those notices should be applicable as well. I um, love a follow-up from DCHD on that because what I've found is that we have, and this goes back to a conversation I had with Councilman Ramos and other council members, what looks vacant to me and my neighbors may not be vacant to DCHD often, and then sometimes we've had multiple notices which within a calendar year that did not, did not eventually become a vacant building notice. So we get there, we, our neighbors follow 311s, and then those two unabated notices don't become a vacant building notice for us. So I just wanna make sure that we can tighten that up because that makes the work of DPW even less hard. Um, I do have a question for um, DPW. I noticed that like we have a large number of requests um, you guys, I believe at one time when we ran our own data, you have addressed over 80% of those requests within your service year. I know that this can be overwhelming. Have we thought about looking at changing um, the consent um, process? I know in DC, you see a red hole, you kill it. Um, I think that we need to have conversations about the consent with the law department because I've literally had in some of the areas where we've had a large number of rat infestations, six neighbors say no, and then we can't do it for the block. I think that we need to have a conversation about that, especially because of the public health crisis. Um, and I would defer to the administration for a meeting on that with the law department, seeing if we can do an opt out rather than the opt in. Um, my harm, my biggest harm is because in my district, I have one of the largest asthma rates and these Norwegian rats do have issues with, that can trigger asthma. Um, so just a few committee follow-ups. One is 
um, DCHC in terms of the vacant building notices for right abatement. Um, and then the other is working with the administration in the law department on the opt out form rather than the opt in form, which makes it easier for DPW to get through the service request sooner than later. Okay, I do want to um, just let you know we do uh, beat vacant buildings. Uh, so all public areas, uh, streets, alleys, tree wells, and we will beat uh, vacant buildings. Um, so that we, we are doing that. And I, I, I hear what you're saying. If it doesn't have a vacant building notice, it, we won't be able to beat it. It has to have the vacant building notice. And um, so when we go out to do our sprint, we call it a sprint. When we go out, we have all our pest control workers. They go in one particular neighborhood. They do a blitz through. They do inspect every house. Um, they will bait anything that they see in the alleys. Um, we do need a consent order to be on somebody's property. So if they are not home and um, we see the rat burrows, we will put a uh, tag on the door to let them know that we were there. We saw rat burrows. Do you consent for us to come back to bait those rat burrows? If they don't, then we send that address over to HCD and they will issue them a violation notice. So with that violation notice, they have a certain amount of time to uh, bait it themselves or get us to come back out to do it. Um, so that is the, um, the process right now. Councilman Porter. Thank you, Madam Chair. My next question has to deal with um, local businesses. So, and I noticed that District 1 um, was one of the main sources um, uh, of rat infestation on the spreadsheet. How are you all coordinating with local businesses to maybe incentivize using cleaner methods um, so that we don't have that large rat population? The reason why I say that is because rats travel. <laughs> <laughs> they travel. Um, and so if if we have those commercial settings within our neighborhoods, ideally, um, I'm talking about like gas stations, things of that nature. If they if they're in within our neighborhoods, they're ideally traveling through the boroughs, through the tunnels to the neighborhoods. So how are you all working with local businesses to, to maybe incentivize proper upkeep, um, cleanliness and sanitation? And if they're not doing it, how are we um, finding them? Um, so if, if we see a sanitation problem and we forward that over to HCD, um, they'll send someone out to talk to that business owner um, or issue a citation or violation notice or what, what have you. We don't have enforcement abilities. Um, but again, our liaison officers are out in the community. That's, uh, you know, they, they check businesses. If, if that's a concern of the neighborhoods, um, they talk to residents. It's all about sanitation. If we notice as we're going through collecting trash or cleaning the sidewalks and we see that this business is not following the sanitation guidelines, then we'll send that over to HCD so that they can have a conversation with that, um, that business owner. But, mm -hmm. So for HCD, how many, I um, mean, you may not know this right now, how many citations have you all issued um, to this effect to local businesses? I don't have that information on hand right now, but I can absolutely get it back to you. Um, just to make sure that I completely understand, you want the number of citations that were issued to businesses? Mm -hmm. Okay, yes. like in the past. Um, by, count, by council district. Okay, cool. Yeah. Thank you. Councilman Torrance, did you have any additional questions? Not, a, not for this round, Madam Chair. Councilwoman Porter, did you have any additional questions? Yes, ma'am, I have one more question. Um, the budget for the rat robot program, do we have that number? What is, what is that number? I don't have it handy, but I'll make sure I get it to you soon. Um, Thank you very much. That's um, be a that quick can, turnaround. Yeah, that can go along with the budget request um, from Councilwoman McCurry. Thank you, ma'am, no further questions. Thank you. We're going to move into public testimony. Um, looks like we do have someone who is signed up to testify today. And we're going to do public testimony within the chambers first, and then we are going to move to see if there's anyone virtually who would like to testify. When, if you would like to testify virtually, if you could just use the raise hand function, 
um, so we can identify you when we get to that point. Um, once you are called to testify, please state your first and last name and also if you're with an organization. The um, person I have signed up right now is Angela Williams. And Ms. Williams, if you could hit the, um, the button that would be on your right hand side that looks like a speaker just to turn the mic on. Is that all? It's on, yep. It's on. Hello, my name is Angela Cruz Williams. I'm with the Morrill Park Community Association. I wanted to state that I have been involved with the Be More Beautiful project, the pitch-ins, and we also do the mayor's cleanups. I just wanted to also talk about, the, I'm sorry, I'm nervous. <laughs> I also wanted to talk about the trash in Baltimore City. It's, I come downtown and I see the streets are so clean. And in Morrill Park, we have trash just laying all around the um, streets. And Morrill Park Community Association, we've recently got two solar compactor trash cans. They've actually been working really well. It was a process getting in touch with the right people and coordinating with the right people to get them installed. And it's something that I wasn't familiar with. I had help with Ms. Porter and I thank you for that. It's, it's, really, it's really been helpful for the neighborhood. You see a lot less trash, but I feel like the trash has been the main problem when it comes to how many rats we see. I actually have next door to me a rat that seems kind of friendly. He comes out every day and we can stand right next to him and he's just there chilling. So it's kind of, you know, it's, it's, I don't really know the word for it, but it's, it's a shame that we have friendly rats that just come right up to us. But I wanted to really bring the point up that I feel like we do definitely, as the community association, we definitely should see our liaisons a lot more often. I wonder if there's a process of the liaisons reporting back to the city to say, look, we went to this community association and we speak to, to these people because there's been a few months where I haven't seen or spoke to my liaison and there's questions that I have and it's hard going back and forth with not getting any answers like for example the solar trash cans we should be able to contact the liaison get the information in the first or second phone call we shouldn't have to keep calling and keep following up so um, which we do. Also, the pitch-ins, I believe it's the pitch-ins that give us the four trash cans per year. We need more. We definitely need more. And Ms. Porter recently helped us with getting another dumpster. We actually filled a dumpster. We paid somebody to go around the community and pick up. He got like 12 mattresses and it felt the dumpster was filled before our time was up. Like we did it within two hours. And I feel like it would be nice to maybe consider allowing community associations to put dumpsters on city property with big dumpsters with a lid and put the community association in control of that dumpster and say, hey, when it's ready to be empty, just call us. And we could help a lot more than what we do. It's hard for us to set up a cleanup when we don't know where we're gonna put the bags and the bulk items after we do a cleanup. That, that's been a problem, it's been a real problem. And again, we, we do have 
the support of Ms. Porter. It's been very helpful, but maybe not every community association has that support where we definitely need more places to put the trash. And I think that would help with the rats going away. They have so many places that they can eat, drink, and hide. Um, and as far as the, the friendly rat next door to me, we put in, we put in hails and requests, 311 request, things of that nature, because my, my neighbor next door just had to have her whole basement redone to prevent rats because they were coming inside the house. When we put in a 311 request, she has privacy fence and, and they just closed it. And we keep putting in 311 request and they just keep quote closing it. So I feel like, I, I believe you kind of answered the question that I had. I was wondering, do you, make sure that you contact the owner of the property before actually closing these requests. I think speaking to the property owner would go a long way versus just closing it and someone like me consistently putting in reports. It's just wasting a whole lot of time and money when just speaking to the property owner, it might have an outcome um, again, it does really go back to the trash in Baltimore City. Morrill Park has a lot of trash and that's one of our big issues. And we're trying to bring up the morale in the community. You know, we see somebody throw something on the ground. There's not many people, but some of us will say, hey, pick that up. And they do. I mean, but there's not very many people that will say that. They're afraid to speak up. So I just wanted to put that little piece of information in here. Thank you very much. I appreciate this here and happening. And thank you for giving me a chance to speak. Thank you. Ms. Williams, thanks for sharing your, um, your testimony. We are very grateful. Um, thank you. Ms. Moore Jackson, I'm not sure if you're the only representative from DPW today, but can we just make sure that someone just connects with um, Ms. Williams or gets her information to Chief Winkler so she can have not yeah. only, yeah, so she can get yeah, her we'll liaison. Speak to her right after details. this hearing. Thank you. I don't believe that we have anyone else within the chambers um, who would like to testify, but. Um, we're going to go and just double check on virtually to see if anyone is there as well. Okay, so I don't see um, any hands raised for virtual testimony. So that's going to close out pub public testimony. Do you have a comment? I have one more follow-up. Uh, okay. This is for the administration, just a follow up with coordination with animal control, because while their work is successful, the other colonies may feed on those who did not make it. I think that we need to have a conversation about cleanup too, when, that, when we do these large area abatements too. That's it. I'm going, I have a comment, then I'm going to swing it to our sponsor um, in case she wants to close out. Ms. Williams um, had an idea. One thing that I think is a great idea, I think just like we're always in here, we have to constantly challenge ourselves, um, whether we're council members, whether we are city agencies, to think outside of the box to solve the simple stuff, the simple stuff. Um, trash is, is very simple to me. Put it in a can. If someone's not putting it in a can, how do we make sure that they get it where it's supposed to go? Um, what I want to see from the administration, and I'm very much looking forward to how much we're spending on this stuff. You've given us an updated idea. We need a real campaign. 
We had campaigns when I was growing up. We had different things. We do not have them now. People need to know that we all share this space. And we're not going to be here, but it's going to be other generations here. How the heck do you dispose of the trash? And it's just very simple to me. So um, I'm looking forward to seeing a public awareness campaign run. Inter real interagency collaboration because we're not going to solve this going to just community going to community meetings. It's not going to be solved that way. It's eight to ten members in my community association meetings, and I got forty thousand people that I represent. So how can we do more? And that's and that's my comment, Councilwoman Porter. Thank you so much, Madam Chair. And just to add on to that, I'm really looking for proactive scientific ways that we can do this. Um, while we want to um, prioritize community members, I believe that we have um, advances within this space that we could be integrating into the city of Baltimore. Um, Ms. Williams coming here today from Mall Park uh, using her own personal funds to come here and share the issues um, that we are existing in Marl Park is just one of many resident concerns that we in the council's office get. Um, I know you all get our emails and, and, our, and our text messages and our communications, um, but we have so much more work to do in this space. And I'm willing to, to have that conversation to kind of do the deep dive. Um, I just wanna make sure that we have the political will and the, the administration um, support behind this. Uh, we can't keep moving in this direction. And other cities um, are beginning to speak more about it and solve these issues. And so I want Baltimore to be, that, be a leader in that respect. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you. You heard it here. Common sense approach, scientific approaches. Um, I believe we can get it done. This hearing is now in recess. And thank you all. Have a great day.